Good evening, and welcome to the Second Unitarian Church's annual Blue Christmas Service. I am the Reverend Derek Jackson, one of two U's community ministers, and my pronouns are he and him. I offer gratitude for the 2U Tech team, our guest musicians, and particularly to Reverend Elizabeth for being in the sanctuary when I was unable to be there in person. This is an intentionally somber service. Amongst the joy and celebration of this winter holiday season, it is common for many of us to also experience the blues especially during pandemic times. As we gather virtually and in person, may we find comfort in the darkness amidst this season of light. Our call to worship today comes from On a Winter Morning by Barbara Cheatham. It is good to be together. When winter's darkness spreads across the land and cold seeps through our thickest coats, we hurry here, drawn by the warmth of faces familiar and new to the welcoming walls of this house. Here for this hour, we open ourselves to new understanding, reassurance, and hope. For this is a place where truth, love, and challenge meet. Welcome. It is good to be together. I invite you, as you feel ready, to take a breath in and out. As we ground ourselves in our bodies, let us enter into our service together. In just a moment, I on Zoom and Reverend Elizabeth in the sanctuary will light our chalice, the symbol of our faith, with these words from Reverend Jennifer Grayson. Universal mystery, guide us away from the desire to shine light in all the corners. Teach us to embrace the night, for without the darkness, we never see the stars. Reverend Elizabeth, would you light our chalice, please? Please rise and body our spirit for our first hymn, number 244. It came upon a midnight clear. The words are on the screen or in the order of service. Just 
Our first reading this evening is A Home for Myself by Timothy Cole. It was the darkness that first invited me in. I learned to love the movement of the seasons, the cycles of life by wading into the darkness. She offered her hand and an abyss in which to sink, a chaos to surrender to. She taught me to rest, made room for my uncertainty. It was there in the darkness that I made space for my grief. Burrowing deep into the earth, I made a home for myself with the roots. She nurtured my soul, Weary from years of rushing when the seasons called me to wait. I fed on the stories of leaves long ago turned to dirt. She silenced the voices of productivity and performance. Cooed me to sleep. And there I waited, watering the ground with tears and sweat and spit warming myself in her bosom deep beneath the frost. She taught me about the necessity of balance. She taught me that liberation grows first where there is no light. It was the absence of light that taught me to look up and see the stars, to trust the promise of life in the waiting time. It was the darkness that offered me home. I invite you now into the spirit of prayer and meditation. Let us start by breathing together. Take a breath in and out. And listen to these words by Jakiran Olayoya. Don't forget to mourn properly the way you don't want anyone to see, wailing, thrashing, heaving, with each breath releasing, purging. Mourn all that you have lost, who you have lost, both in passing over and through, leaving behind an emptiness that draws up and squeezes heartily. Mourn with no regard to place or time, feeling deeply the etching of each second across bare skin, leaving behind canyons to fill. Mourn until eyes, bleary and aching, strain to see. Mourn until your chest unclenches and breath eases. Mourn until your spirit sighs with relief, settles and snores. Mourn. Let it be so. Amen. 
blessed be. Our second reading this evening is How the Stars Get in Your Bones by Jan Richardson. Sapphire, diamond, emerald, quartz. Think of every hard thing that carries its own brilliance, shining with the luster that comes only from uncountable ages in the earth, in the dark buried beneath unimaginable weight, bearing what seemed impossible, bearing it still. And you, shouldering the grief you had thought so solid, so impermeable, the terrible anguish you carried as a burden now become, who can say what day it happened? A beginning. See how the sorrow in you slowly makes its own light, how it conjures its own fire. See how radiant even your despair has become in the grace of that sun. Did you think this would happen by holding the weight of the world? by giving into the press of sadness and time? I tell you, there's blazing in you. It does not come by choosing the most difficult way, the most daunting. It does not come by the sheer force of your will. It comes from the helpless place in you that, despite all, cannot help but hope the part of you that does not know how not to keep turning toward this world, to keep turning your face toward the sky, to keep turning your heart toward this unendurable earth, knowing your heart will break, but turning it still. I tell you, 
This is how the stars get in your bones. This is how the brightness makes a home in you as you open to the hope that burnishes in every fractured thing it finds and sets it shimmering. A generous light that will not cease no matter how deep the darkness grows, no matter how long the night becomes. Still, still, still the secret of secrets keeps turning in you, becoming beautiful, becoming blessed, kindly kindling the luminous way by which you will emerge, carrying your shattered heart like a constellation within you, singing to the day that will not fail to come. It's coming on Christmas, they're cutting down trees, they're putting up reindeer and singing songs of joy and peace. So oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on. But it don't snow here, you know, it stays pretty green. I'm gonna make a lot of money and then I'm gonna quit this crazy scene. Oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on. Oh, I wish I had a river so long I would teach my
We invite us now into a ritual of candle lighting and reflection adapted from words by Reverend Deborah Falk. All around us are bright lights and merry messages. Yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There is grief with the loss of relationships. Those we love no longer with us because of death. Those we have loved who are estranged from us. Those we love yet experience a diminishment of intimacy. There is a grief with the loss and change of relationship. Grief, bittersweet, for it is a consequence of the presence of love. This season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of grief, I invite you to name silently, out loud, or in the chat, the grief you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages, yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There may be pain in our bodies. Physical pain as a natural outcome of aging. Physical pain that presents itself in illness. Pain in the body that forces us to change and imposes limitations. Pain, bittersweet, for physical experience includes both pain and pleasure. This season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of pain, I invite you to name silently or out loud or in the chat the pain you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages, yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There may be anger and regret with the memories we hold. Anger with past experiences of hurt or abuse. Regret of our own actions that may have caused hurt to others. Anger that life has not turned out as we imagined regret for what we might have said or done. Anger and regret. Bittersweet in presenting the possibility for healing and forgiveness. This season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of anger and regret, I invite you to name silently, out loud, or in the chat, the anger and regret you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages, yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There may be uncertainty that accompanies transition and change, uncertainty of what the future may bring, 
uncertainty of direction or purpose after retirement or change of vocation. Uncertainty when changing residence by choice or necessity. Uncertainty, a constant in life, lets us know we are alive and change. This season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of uncertainty, I invite you to name silently, out loud, or in the chat, the uncertainty you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages, yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There may be a sense of hopelessness. Hopelessness in the face of so much violence and suffering. Hopelessness with attempts to heal our aching world and ourselves. Hopelessness and witnessing what we have not managed to accomplish. Hopelessness. Bittersweet for its longing reminds us of our capacity for hope and the human spirit's tenacity and courage that rests deep within each of us. As this season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of hopelessness, I invite you to name silently, out loud, or in the chat, the hopelessness you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages, yet in our heart, not all is joyful. There is loneliness. Loneliness when we find ourselves alone after being long partnered. Loneliness when we are separated from loved ones. Loneliness when we move to a new community and struggle to find our way. Loneliness. Bittersweet, for it is felt only when we have known connectedness. This season brings forth many feelings. As I light this candle of loneliness, I invite you to name silently, out loud, or in the chat, the loneliness you carry this season. All around us are bright lights and merry messages. Yet in our heart, we feel blue. But we know that being alive is a courageous act in which we engage all our, of our emotions. And this season brings forth many, including the comfort of being together. Blessed be.
My friend, we are in the midst of the Christmas season. And all around us, we are seeing images and messages of joy, merriment, and cheer, and light. So many images of light and many colors, light that we are supposed to feel in our hearts and in our souls. And this year has been a lot. How do we hold the struggles that we carry in this time of joy and light and celebration? I think that in this secular season, this kind of hallmark holiday time, what has been lost? are the other celebrations at this time, the other holy days. There's more than just Christmas at this time. And in the Christian calendar, before we get to Christmas, this time that we are in is Advent, a time of waiting time of anticipation, anticipating the hope, the healing that is to come in the world, but we are not there yet. We're doing our work in preparing, preparing ourselves for that time. And so Advent reminds us to stop, to pause, Take time to reflect on what's going on for us. To spend time in who we are and what we are and what we are feeling. In the similar ways, as we think of Hanukkah, we're thinking of this time of waiting and reflecting on the journey remembering of the time when we did not remember or we did not know what would come next with the oil last and holding on day by day by day. We remember that life is not always easy and embrace that struggle. And the time of the winter solstice reminds us that the darkness, it grows longer and longer and longer. And we need to find our home in that darkness until the light will grow once more. And it will. But we need to find that balance. We need to find comfort in the darkness to remember the time of the womb where we are cared for and held. Held like the darkness, like a blanket, holding us, covering us, caring for us. And all these things that we're dealing with, all these emotions can rest in us and they can have be processed and engaged until the time comes for the light to return, for joy to come. We don't have to jump into the joy of Christmas. And in fact, we shouldn't. The calendar should not dictate our schedule for grief and healing. That is personal to us, to the needs of our hearts, the needs of our souls. As Timothy Cole says in our first reading, it was the absence of light that taught me to look up and see the stars. 
to trust the promise of life in the waiting time. It was the darkness that offered me home. Be with the darkness. Take the time to grieve. Take the time to feel. Take the time to bear open our souls. Be with the heaviness until it is ready to be released, creating the space for healing to come in. To slowly knit ourselves back together again, ready now for joy, ready now for celebration. My friends, you don't have to be ready for the Christmas spirit yet. It has been a hard year, following another hard year. On top of all the things that have come to us in our lives. Rest. Reflect. Be present to your body and soul. Find comfort in the darkness. Let yourself heal. Blessed be. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, Comfort Me. The words are on the screen are in the order of service.
I invite you to cross your hands over your heart and hear these words of benediction. Let go of the expectations around Christmas spirit. Ignore the messages of joy and light. Find comfort in the darkness. Being present to your feelings, to your body, to your soul, and what they need at this time. Take time to pause, reflect, and eventually heal. Blessed be. Go in peace. <laughs>